the increasing standards of living that so many of us are enjoying does seem to be resulting in increased damage to ourselves and others. So how can we protect the environment from the pollution damage that we're doing? How can we protect individuals from the harm of our passive smoking? What could be done to prevent the disappearance of fish stocks from our oceans? We may want less pollution and less depletion of our fish stocks, but are we prepared for the costs of achieving this? We also have a problem that there are other things we seem to be underproducing. We're producing too much environmental damage, but we're not producing enough health care, especially in developing nations. Now we've seen that markets are a powerful way of making decisions about scarce resources. But it doesn't seem to be very good at solving problems such as these. Furthermore, there are things which society clearly wants and values, but the market is not going to provide. National defence, for example. How do markets establish the provision of lighthouses? And even if the government provides these things, there's a problem. How much of these goods should the government provide? How can they make a rational decision about the optimal amount of such public goods? Now, before we decide that markets can't handle problems such as these, let's recall from our previous studies why markets can be so valuable. And we'll do it by using the perfectly competitive model that we previously developed. Remember that when private firms produce goods, they have costs. The cost to producers are the cost to society because the firm's costs are made up of purchases of scarce materials, land, labour, capital and so on. A producer has to bid these resources away from other producers and so has to pay the opportunity cost of the resources consumed. But the producer will only find this process worthwhile if consumers are willing to buy the output. So the benefits to society have to be worthwhile. We can show that such a market process leads to an optimal production level of goods produced. In doing so, we'll introduce you to the idea of private costs and social costs, and private benefits and social benefits. We'll then be in a strong position to see why the mechanism seems not to work in some industries such as fishing, cigarettes, healthcare in the developing world, and lighthouses.